everyone i welcome all the professors and resource person on behalf of department of management study pb jain college let's start this program with the psychological sayings that when you focus on problem you will have more problems when you focus on possibility you will have more opportunities now i would like to call upon professor alni to give a small introduction about our college thank you blessy good afternoon one and all education is the most powerful weapon which we can change which we can use to change the world by nelson mandela dhanraj bay jain college was established in the year 1972 with a vision of transformation of human mind and creation of new culture that has the patience for rules laws code of conduct moral values natural courtesy and human dignity our college barriers are president dayachand savanshuka secretary administration dr harshal mehta secretary academic and finance jashwant munod our college features our college has an 49 years of excellence in education proven leadership with vision and integrity it's an autonomous institution with a curriculum as per industry needs it offers 12 ug program and 6 pg program also research programs in mphil phd in commerce corporate secretaryship mathematics and physical education also college has a well qualified and experienced faculty team and it offers lowest fee structure and free competition training for interested students various club like edc apj club women's empowerment cell etc has been established to enhance the leadership skills of the students our college has a very good sports team and has won many laurels to the institution institution has effective tie up with industries corporate bodies professional bodies like tcs cts icai icsa cma and chartered trading agencies etc for students employability enhancement and enrichment in addition to general courses the college also offers some value added courses thank you ma'am thank you blessing now i request our department president dr a nagmar to deliver the welcome address and introduction of our resource person thank you blessing very good evening one and all present here behalf of department of management studies of the db jain college i extend a warm welcome our resource person ishwari andi appan and most valued invited participants from various colleges first of all i would like to convey my sincere thanks to our management president sri r dayanthan savanshuka secretary dr harishan mehta finance secretary jaswant munod respected principal dr m sendal raj and professor in charge dr m saktivel murugan for their valuable guidance and encouragement in all our efforts i have a immense pleasure to introduce our resource person iron lady ishwari andi appan she is the first woman who finished the triathlon in indian soil she is a multidisciplinary woman she completed engineering in sastra university in electronic and instrumentation she has also completed mba in human resource management after 10 years of break she completed pg diploma in management in special education in multiple disability followed by msc psychology now she finished her diploma in sports nutrition and professor mai she is the project manager in an it company and heading a global team on cloud based app she is also doing curriculum and concept developer in sparrow kids group of schools she is also founder and counselor in srina professional counseling and learning center once again i welcome you you ma'am for this wonderful session thank you ma'am i now request our resource person to take over the session good evening one and all hope i am audible yes ma'am yes, okay thank you so thank you so much for this evening and uh, um what i have heard from my uh, professors and from my uh, historical informations is time is the best gift that one can give to anybody so you all have given me a couple of minutes of your lifetime which is so beautiful and uh, memorable for me so i would want to make the best use of this time and uh, give you some information on what i have learned and uh, how my learning can help you in your education profession and on the education of the children and the students whom you are going to take them to the world 
Okay, um, not wasting much of your time. I'm just getting into the topic and on the way I will be introducing my own self on what I'm good at and why I'm here. So the topic that I have taken here is walk into an adolescent's brain, a professor's point of view. And uh, this is not not something that I have taken it on my own. I had a discussion with a couple of professors and a couple of uh, students um, I, who are in the journey of their uh, bachelor degree or the master's degree. And this is something that impresses me in getting into getting a deeper dive because this is where the uh, a, a boy or a girl turns into a man or a woman and gets into this life of uh, a complete adulthood and taking their life forward. Okay, as uh, Narmada Ma'am and others introduced, uh, I'm Ishwari Andiyapan. And uh, before I get into an uh, introduction, I would like to thank uh, DBJ in college and the management people and uh, Mrs. Narmada Bobalan, uh, the HOD of the management studies, uh, I'm sorry, the accounts department. So uh, thanks for inviting here. So uh, who am I here uh, to give you this information? I, I am a... Um, I am a project manager in an IT company and uh, I am a learning concept developer in Sparrow Kids Group of School and I am also a counsellor in the same school for the parents and for the children on their learning abilities. And I am um, also a counsellor in Srina Professional Counselling and Learning Centre. Uh, so this is the profession that I come up with. and. Uh, um, uh, I, my educational qualification is versatile. Um, I am a jack of many tribes because I have designed my career uh, and I have designed my education around the needs of my family, which defines me the best. So who am I? I am a mother of two children. And this is the best, um, the, this is the best ever way that I can explain myself. This is how I have built my educational career. And um, I have done my uh, engineering in uh, electronics and instrumentation in Sastra University. And I've done my MBA in HR um, in the Amadurai Kamrajar University. Followed by that, I took a 10 years of break and uh, I was just um, taking care of my children. And, um, and I was just going through the way of the life that it take me. Uh, a, a normal life where uh, I would just go uh, take care of my kids and I would just do my um, nine to uh, six official job and I was just going. And life has given me a chance to get in the PG diploma and multiple disability. This is about uh, 36 disabilities that uh, uh, that any children or any adults or anybody for that matter that they would go through. And uh, the, I'm, I've done a diploma uh, to specialize on that multiple disability. Uh, followed by that, I found that there is a need for me to take up uh, this to the core uh, because the multiple disability stream only gave me the um, top level information of what it is, but I would want to get a deeper dive into this and uh, got into psychology. And uh, yes, I'm an engineer with a psychology. Um, so following that, I did a sports nutrition. That, that is uh, something that I did for my passion. So coming back to who I am, uh, I'm a mother of two children and I'm a triathlete and uh, I started, I, I'm not a sports person during my school days or during my college days. I'm, I'm a, I, I've started this career uh, of being a triathlete at the age of uh, 34. That's where I started. And uh, 36 is the age I started excelling in this. And uh, I got my first title as the first woman to complete the Ironman distance, which is 140.6 miles at one shot. Uh, I have to swim first for 3.8 kilometers, cycle for 180 kilometers, followed by that I have to run for 42.2 kilometers. And this is one Ironman distance. And this is what I've completed in the year of 2016 when I was 36. So um, in the process of uh, getting my Ironman title, I also finished a Super Runner series. Um, this is done uh, with, in uh, affiliation with the um, Adox Cycling Club. It is a France-based cycling club, where in, in one Adox year, I will have to complete uh, 200 kilometers, 300, 400, 600 kilometers in a span of four months. This is a cycling event wherein we will 
start from Chennai and uh, there will be a destination given to us. Uh, for 200, it was given as Marakannam and for 300, it was Mailam and 400, we went to Velur somewhere, uh, Javadi Hills and turned back. And for 600, uh, I was uh, pedaling from Chennai to uh, Tiruchi Samevram and coming back. So this is the series that I completed to get this, uh, earn this title. And I'm the fifth woman in uh, Tamil Nadu to get this title of Super Runner. And of course, there are a lot of men who have covered this distance and um, uh, coming from the uh, gender, I, I come from a women gender. So I get into the, I've got the fifth uh, position in this uh, stuff. And uh, I am a green volunteer. Um, I am more into waste management, recycling, upcycling, um, green, uh, the, the terrace gardening and um, forestation. These are something that I, I, I'm really, really inclined to. So... Um, of all that, I support uh, children with different abilities. It is not the neurotypical, which we call it as normal. It is the special children who are with special abilities. Uh, uh, maybe there are some abilities that they don't have or there are some ability which people have to develop in them. This is the area that I volunteer into. So this is a brief introduction about me. And um, Narmada, I will just give you a note that I've started my timer. Even if at all I'm exceeding, uh, you can let me know five minutes before so that I can just um, console, confine it to uh, finish it on time. Okay, Thank you. And, yeah, I'm getting into the uh, deeper into the topic here. So adolescence. So I have given you the slide with uh, some numbers. This early adolescence, the middle adolescence, the late adolescence. It starts from 10 years and finishing at 22. But we have heard that the adolescence is a teenagers, but it is really not. It, it actually starts from 10 years because of the modernization and because of the globalization, the diversity, uh, the, the more the millennials, the, they are, these days children are born with uh, not born with the golden spoon or the silver spoon that we were told. They are born with the mobiles and the laptops. The millennials are equipped with all the equipments that we have been dreaming about. So the adolescence actually starts at the age of 10 and it does not end at 19. It just goes on till 22. So technically what I have put in here in the slide is the early adolescence between 10 to 13, the middle adolescence between 14 to 17, and the late adolescence is 18 to 22. This is where your students fall into, the late adolescence. So they are not no different. They are an adolescent child, student, kid, however you call it. So what is adolescence? So, uh, yeah, technically we have been talking about the age and all that stuff. But what is really adolescence? It is a beautiful terminology in itself. Take it from me, it is a beautiful terminology. Having said this, technically about the age from 10 till 22, let's take a deeper dive. It is a stage where a boy or a girl turns into a man or a woman. Yes, you heard that right. It is an intermediate stage where a boy or a girl turns into a man or a woman. So this is not a boy or a girl. This is not a man or a woman. This is an intermediate stage where they are developing. Adolescence is full of thrill seeking. It's full of memories. It's full of beautiful memories. It's full of problems. It's full of innovations, the creativity, the love, the teenage, the networking, the building their circle, sharing stories. They're making stories where they themselves are the only heroes and the heroines. So this is how pretty much I, develop, I define an adolescent. It is full of life and it's full of beautiful memories. Okay, adolescence is a time of growth and maturation in the brain. If you take it simply just on a, on a bookish way, it's, that's how we take it. But brain is brain is full of plastic. It can change, it can deform, it can take into any shape. Yes, it's plastic. Wherever you fill it, whatever you fill it, it changes. The brain changes every single moment. It changes by its inputs. It gets from the environment, positively, negatively, neutrally, whatever you name it, the brain changes. 
It matures by age, it matures by experience, it matures by time, it matures by the environment and the exposure we give to them. Along with this, we prof you professors and we psychologists are trying to give them a discipline and education, show them the career, show them a vision where these, whatever we are trying to give them is not going to give them immediate outputs. But what they are into, the memories, the problems, innovations, creativity, love, networking, friend circle, the storytelling, all these are having an immediate impact where they can just see it. They just put a post on the post on Facebook or the Insta, they immediately get likes. But Baron, what we say, we tell them, be disciplined, be career focused, be educated, um, get Focus on your education. All these are going to give them an output only when they go out of the college. So we are trying to create a vision which is not available at this time, but they are in a world where the vision is already there. So brain is plastic. It, the adolescent's brain is a, is a time of growth and maturation in the brain. Okay, this is pretty much a teenager's brain looks like. It's full of love. The frontal lobe is filled with love and addiction to the Facebook, addiction to Instas, the TVs, the body language, addiction to the other sex, um, the rebellion, the ego that I am the center of my story. I am the, I'm what I am. So whatever advices or whatever um, for vision that we are going to give them is all lying at the lower level, wherein the love, the addiction, the TVs, the medias, the egos, the friendship, the circle that they built, all these tops their brain. This is where we are going to work on. So our job is really beautiful than the teenager's life. Okay, we are trying to change something here. What are we going to change? Yeah, we have, we have to change, but what? Change is easy? No. Let me start this with um, two of the uh, famous quotes by Hathiklas and Benjamin Franklin. Change is the only constant, is what Heraclitus says. Change is the only constant in life. One's ability to adopt to these changes will determine their success in life. This is what Benjamin Franklin says. Okay, these are the words that are uh, that the per people, the famous people, have told us. But change is easy. Big question. It's a million-dollar question. Okay, let's make use of the current uh, scenario, the pandemic. It's a corona-dollar question. Yeah, what are we going to change? Who are we going to change here? A big question, a corona dollar question. I'm moving on to the next slide. So what are we going to change? When I say change, what are we going to change? Are we going to change the curriculum? Are we going to change the syllabus? Are we going to change the curriculum? Culture, student, this, that. Oh my God. Curriculum, syllabus, culture, student. These are existing for years long. This is not the area that we can work on immediately. This, these need needs a lot of support from a lot of different areas. This needs support from the government, from the uh, um, from the forefathers of the education, from the educational board. This, that, there are a lot, lots, lots, lots of things that need an approval. But what can we change at this time? Yes, there is a change possible. Leaving that question as it is, I'm moving on to um, to the next thing, uh, next stuff where I'm trying to explain about. Um, Harvard Gartner, multiple intelligence. So what Harvard Gartner says, this is something that we follow right from the preschoolers, preschoolers at the age of two and a half years. So I would like to reiterate it here because this is where this is what we are trying to put it into the curriculum of the two and a half years is going to really take into shape. So I'm just briefly running through this. A bodily kinesthetic is a person who is body smart. An interpersonal person is a people smart who is like, um, come, let's do it. If you just give them a task, they, they will be able to gather a group of uh, people and they're just able to move on. And a verbal linguistic uh, student who is a word smart student, anything you give them by word, uh, by ocal or by book, they will be able to grasp it right away. 
the logic based the mathematical uh, the logic smart the number smart student any number you give them any figures you give them they will be able to tackle it within seconds wherein we will just use a calculator we'll just put in type in and we'll make a big flow chart to get that answer but wherein within a matter of seconds they'll be able to get that stuff a naturalist who is a nature specific person nature specific student and uh, i'm moving on to the next one which is the interpersonal the self smart so uh, they are smart by themselves they don't need external interferences on that visually smart which is a picture smart student and i'm moving on to the next one is a musical smart so this doesn't need much of the explanation so a student or a person of any age group should come fall into any of this one sector majorly and rest of the section or rest of it on step by step process if you take me i am number smart i am nature smart i am smell smart i am a people smart but my expertise falls on the logic smart the number smart and i also fall into the rest of the stuff but if you take me on the picture you want me to take a selfie oh my god that that will be the worst selfie that you will ever get and i'm zero on music and uh, i i'm i do a lot of miracles to get my words smart abilities this way every person is so good it's super good at one topic one of this intelligence and they have a secondary intelligence level wherein uh, for me it is nature self and the people smart uh, and the words smart so this way every single student every single person has their intelligence in this sector so this is what harvard gartner says so we have to identify our students what they are smart at i'm moving to the next slide wherein i will be explaining a little more on this multiple intelligence there as well okay and our question still remains as who to change and what to change and how to change okay and we are trying to find an answer and this is what is the theory that i'm giving you the learning pyramid the current method of lecture based curriculum academics delivery reaches only 5% i'm sorry to say this yes it reaches only 5% of the students who are word smart reading the self reading helps 10% of the students the audio visual the audio visual way of learning you put them a presentation you give them a youtube link you tell them that you go to google and search find out this they will be super smart to just get there and get the information up demonstration you put them apart you give them the realistic environment and ask them to set it up 30% of the students will learn in this discussion this where a 50% of the students get their smartness in so you put them into different groups make them interact with each other then um, then we telling them when a, when a student of their own age discusses a similar topic they would be able to understand better and the 75% comes in practice and doing where they realistically get into the job and do it 90% of the students fall under this teach others category when you tell a student go read it by yourself they won't do it can you read it and explain it here so that rest of the these students will also learn it yes every other student will go take their book read and develop their concept and try to deliver it so this is a learning pyramid so what works here is teach others when we say it is for you they don't take it when we say that can we all do it together when you lead it with and you lecture it when you lead it 90 percentage comes along with you this is the student average retention rates okay what's in our control now the ways we teach the ways we adopt to teach is what under our control yes the ways we teach the students and the ways we adopt to teach them is what is under our control okay so we have to said that uh, the ways we teach the student and ways we adopt to teach the student so are we going to change something on the curriculum and we say ways to teach no the curriculum remains as it is the syllabus remains as it is the student remains as it is their environment remains as it is everything is as it is but what we are going to do is we are going to make somebody else responsible for this teaching 
the ways we adopt to teach our students and this is where uh, the objective really falls into the balance between student and professor i am reiterating few words here adolescent is a thrill seeking as making beautiful memories the problems is full of innovations is full of creativity is full of love is full of networking building circles for their own stories they are the center of their own stories they are the universe because we say that there is a storytelling age when they are small till 10 years they will talk about what happened in the environment she did this that girl did this this boy did this mom you didn't give me this brother didn't brother took away this this is the story that they form into but after 10 till 20 the stories that they form is about themselves what they go through what they want what they feel what they dream about this is the story that they are creating and they are the center of the story they are the heroes and heroines of the story okay and i'm really creating a little on the brain yes the brain is so plastic it matures by what it sees on the environment the exposure it matures by age experience the time that we give them so whatever we are going to tell them we are going to teach them is going to have a visionary view what they are currently having is an experiential view where they can real on the real time they can experience and feel touch that experience but education discipline career is all something that's going to come after 2 3 years so the corona dollar question the million dollar question of what to change the 70 30 ways of teaching the students this is a method that i would suggest to the professors here yes what we are trying to teach our students the academics is all well designed it is all well designed proofread and uh, lots of uh, professors and students lots of batches have already gone through all that material and these are really put into place now so these materials are really old but we cannot change the curriculum we cannot change the syllabus we have to go through that basics only that basics is going to lay a lot of upscale buildings on their career but our millennials are born with the mobiles are born with the laptop even before we tell them they would have already gone through all these concepts okay before i get into the 7030 i would like to uh, uh, tell you a narrative situation which happened at my home because i take a lot of real time examples from my life so there was a conversation between my father and my teenager who's of 15 years and my father of seven, early 70 60s so what happened is my father was talking about playing cards uh, the sudatam we call it in tamil so he was talking about the sudatam is a sin and uh, this is something that no one could ever do it so uh, this is something that we could we should avoid and uh, because uh, the reason is due to this uh, pandemic and due to this lockdown there was um, mahabharatam that was going on the uh, tvs and they were uh, doing the sudatam and uh, my father happened to I- i'm just rushing through the story um if you want me to slow down you can let me know so uh, after he's seeing the sudatam he commented that uh, this is something really bad shouldn't be doing it's just saying my teenager who was at 15 years old this, that those boy of the those days it was it was playing cards the sudatam but these days it is the mobile and the media that is putting us into this lot of trouble so you have to replace it and he walked off and me my mother my father everybody were looking at each other seeing the growth of where the children are really going into when a 15 year old can talk like this the 18 year old who was sitting in front of you who is making fun of you who is making um, giggling at the classes making fun of the other um, counterparts who already knows a lot of information about it who is a gifted child who has a lot of information about what you are going to teach them they will really test your patience they will try to see what the teacher or the professor knows more than what i know so uh, they will try to prove that i know things why don't i prove it here so let me try and ask questions where i put the uh, person in the dias in trouble 
yes these days students are capable of it because that is their knowledge so but we cannot go out of the academics academics is something that is the base building if the basement is not strong we cannot proceed forward so the basement is equally important or more important what the millennials have in hands in terms of exposure so whatever we are trying to teach them in terms of uh, books they already learnt it in terms of experience so what we can really change here instead of we going in there and standing there and giving them a lecture where an only 5% of the students are really going to listen who are word smart we can pull them into a conversation and make it a discussion make it a group discussion make it teach it teach them to the other so i'm going back on one slide so than giving them on lecture we can put them on the rest of the stuff where you can form groups i'm going one slide forward so you can make groups if you have a classroom of about 50 students maybe so you can form into uh, maybe 10 groups or uh, or five groups where there are only 5% of the students who are really word smart so don't put all the word smarts in one group rather split them and put it in all different groups this way find out the strength of the rest of the group and split them accordingly and uh, put them make may form groups and this is where your role really comes into so you make the best group where in one student is a word smart one is logic smart one is people smart one is body smart one is music smart one is picture smart one is self smart and one is nature smart yes i just ran through the circle so your group need to have um, i think one of uh, the person has to go on mute uh, there are a lot of noise okay um so um the the, uh, the your group need to be uh, need to have a mixture of all these mixture of all these students and then coming to this slide where we are going to give them a lecture but it is not really we the professors we are going to facilitate we form the group where we told them that you go teach the students and i am going to sit here and listen to what you are going to teach give them the responsibility these days most of the children are single child at home so they do not have a uh, bonding with the other other student other children at home other kids at home so the college is the place the school is the place or the college is the place where they get along their counterparts to get along they socialize they make friends they make a sisterhood they make a brotherhood so they're too very excited there their excitation need to be appreciated at the same time education and discipline need to be given so let's make use of their collaboration let's make use of their knowledge and build it tell them we are going to make this class a teach others class okay so you are going to take this topic give them 10 topics um baron you feel that th these are the basic topics that they would have already known uh, rather you reserve your own topics where they would just long for the professor to get on the dais and give them some lecture just make that scenario and then get on to the lecture of yours until then give them an exposure of teach yourself when you say teach yourself they have to go through a lot of material and they would need the support of another person wherein a word smart student will not have an interpersonal skills they will not get along with the other student so when they get out of the college until they are in college they will be super smart they will be shining they will get 90% out of 100 but when they are getting into their career they will be a dumb person wherein the interpersonal smart student they will be super cool on the interpersonal skills even if they just get the border marks and pass out they would be super shining wherein when they make groups like this they will start interacting without any choice they will start interacting so they will be able to practice they will be able to discuss they will be able to demonstrate in, in internally within themselves they will make an audio visual presentation to present in front of the students and they will read it once for their own self to present it for others when a student does a class for their own student there will be more curiosity to understand what is this batch going to do it for us name them give a uh, different groups different names and start coding them that's where your job primarily lies so 
after all this is done after all the basic topics have been covered have some special topics for you when you get on to the dais the, the students themselves need to make a pin drop silence where you don't have to force them to make any noise uh, any silence there so you can give them all that i'm sorry so all that they would need in just that small gap of 30 percentage of the days that you are going to get on the dais the rest of the time you can facilitate them and adopt methods wherein the students are going to teach the students okay this is where the 70 30 uh, balance lies so what are we going to really teach the students when you want to uh, when you get on to the dais what these days books does not have wherein the business really needs how to sell a product how to sell themselves in the global market how to think how to negotiate how to face a failure i repeat it how to face a failure investing the money finding their passion making an impact start the business i'm repeating the sequence again where the professor can really make a big difference how to sell a product how to sell their own self on a global market to earn a job how to think how to negotiate how to face the failure how to invest money how to find their passion and follow it how to make an impact how to start a business this is where you can really really make a difference on a student's life so this is where the 70 30 lies so whatever is in the book whatever the students can learn by themselves wherever the audio visuals are already available wherever you feel that the students will excel more by seeing into a youtube or seeing into a google because google youtube uh, facebook books the instas um, whatsapp uh, the tiktoks whatever you call it these cannot be separated from these days life instead of going and telling them you have to take out something from your life tell them you are going to add what you like for the betterment of your own life when you just go and pull out a, an eatable from a child's hand the child will cry but when you say that instead of eating this junk food why don't you eat the same uh, maybe a potato chips why don't you eat this uh, potato raw just replace it we are going to change what they have with what they can do with those media and with those telecommunication with those information available on the youtube with those information available on the telecommunication tools so the 70 30 balance again is putting the students responsible for studying putting the students responsible for their own career putting the students responsible for their own classes to happen properly properly and you be a facilitator and take them to a global world give them a vision give them a career where their career vision where they are going to visualize what they are really going to become in future so my concept here is make them responsible they like responsibility the brain is plastic it always wants to learn something from the environment exploit them in a right way give them information where they are going to get into really get into business and they are going to make it happen for themselves rather than we going behind them and telling them there is a saying for uh, for a mother that i am uh, that i tell why who are coming for a counseling to me you advise a child it doesn't listen to it it leads the life seeing what a parent says a father says don't watch tv a mother says don't watch tv the child will not listen because the whole environment where the child is bringing up brought up is all with tvs and mobiles a uh, father will sit for the breakfast with the mobile filling the mobile and he'll be keep eating the child will also follow it when you tell the child or uh, don't use your mobile phones don't use your tv when they are getting into a student of a teenager the adolescent you tell them they don't listen you follow it they listen the same thing what i would want to tell here don't advise them don't go behind them lead them you be the model and you step out and give them the stage and see what wonders that they are making in their life 
So I keep this aside and I would want to give a personal note to the uh, professors here. I'm a follower of uh, whatever I preach is something that I follow. And if I don't, if I haven't done that, I wouldn't do it, preach to others because I'm not, I'm not a person who gets convinced by a bookish idea. I want to do it myself, experience it myself, only then I do it. Always fill your cup with happiness. When I say your cup, it is personally your cup. When you come into the college in the morning, if you come in with a lot of problems, you will deliver what you have in your cup. Do a physical activity for yourself. Fill your cup. Because everybody in this world loves appreciation. When a child is sleeping, when a baby of about one year or two years is sleeping for two, three hours continuously, we go and prize the child. Wow, you slept for two hours? But when they grow into an adolescent, if a boy or a girl, or um, and when they grow into an adulthood, a man or a woman sleeps for two hours in the, during the day, we don't get that appreciation. We need appreciation to continue our life. So how are we going to fill our cup? Let's do some physical activity. When you are doing some physical activity, either go for a walk or uh, uh, go for a jog or a cycling or just go out and buy some milk or uh, some groceries in the morning. Have it a habit for every day to just get out and breathe some good oxygen. What this does to ourselves is, um, uh, I still have three, four minutes, so I'm just using that. So... Um, what this does is this secretes dopamine, serotonin. These are the chemicals that it secretes in our brain. So this dopamine is something that excites our adrenaline. So when you're excited by your adrenaline, whatever might be the situation, you are driving to go to the college and somebody comes, uh, passes uh, by you and uh, bypasses the signal or tries to dash with you, you will still go and question them, but not in the way that, uh, you manhandle them. Ra rather, you will just put it in a way that that really reaches the other person. Fill your cup with a lot of happiness. Fill yourself, your personal life with a lot of happiness. It is not something that you can take away the problems that you have in your life. Rather, do a physical activity once in a day. Do something for your own self. You are important for your own self. If you start following this, your child will start following it. When your child can follow it, when the, there will be students in your area who will be listening to it. Or this information will somehow come and fall into your lectures and they will. the students who are following you will know that my professor goes for a walk in the morning and uh, that is why he is so happy in the morning and uh, he's able to deliver things happily in the college. So this is something that you can teach your students and keep their moral and uh, the mental energy level always high which is going to reciprocate replicate in their real life and they are going to bring balance in their life because after coming out of the school there is no physical activity for the students not only the students also for the adults adulthood the um, age old Rather, if at all we decide something and we get out and do some physical activity, there is no importance for physical activity until um, a lifestyle disease like um, diabetes or a blood pressure comes and hits us. So before that, let us all come back and rehydrate our life and put ourselves in the middle of our life and think about that we need to do something for ourselves so that everybody around us will take care of their own self and this is going to make a positive impact on, on everybody's life. So I end the session with a note again, the 7030 proposition. So always put the students in the front and lead the line. And this is, this is something that will put the students into a primary task and they will start taking ownership rather than making um, fun of the rest of the group or, or making fun of the uh, professor who is already standing there and taking through the class, you have to make them feel the importance. We cannot tell them the importance because they are not going to listen. But the visual media is so powerful. Anything that you show them that really impacts them. You put them on the stage and let all others see through that. And 
when a student is making fun of the other student he will know that that is going to come back to me so i am some i have to listen here and i have to take lead this classroom and they lead the classroom with a lot of uh, um, positive energy and uh, we are in the learning process to get on to the next stage thank you so much for your time uh, thank you so much bb jain college and uh, mrs narmada bubalan and rest of all the staff members here present and the uh, management who uh, are not to miss them uh, they have given me this opportunity thank you so much and i believe the session open for the question and answer thank you ma'am that was very interesting and informative now dr narmada ma'am will read out the queries from the chat box thank you prasi uh thank you so much for your wonderful speech ma'am nowadays we face lot of struggle to handle the teenagers now we have a lot of tips to control our students and also we have a scope to give a responsible citizen for our society now i would like to consolidate our participants queries from the chat window the first question from professor nisha nowadays the first year students are entering into the college with many distraction they are deviated more how to motivate the first year students and make them as a achiever that's a very good question and that's a very interesting question for me um that is again coming back uh, boiling back to the uh, same information i gave you when it's before make them into smaller groups if you have a students of volume of 50 you put them as 50 they are 50 different heads if you make them smaller groups you make them a group of about uh, uh, five five students or eight students in a batch they become responsible for one work so their distraction automatically goes and they come back to the situation of where learning really has to happen because they are responsible for presenting on the dais the next morning they have to score their rest of the uh, counterparts so make them responsible for something then you uh, um, uh can uh, somebody go on mute there's a noise okay so make them responsible the responsibility will really give you a lot of freedom in terms of teaching you can concentrate on teaching and they can concentrate on uh, understanding the concepts thank you ma'am the next question what was the advice to the parent of teenagers that's a nice question advice uh, to the parent of the teenagers um when you get on to a parent teachers meeting or a parent professor meeting um you can give them all positive information find them based on the howard uh, gartner's principle you can find out what the student is very smart at and you can give the parent the information on your know, daughter or your uh, son is so good at number smart and uh, if you start your start focusing his career on this area he will be able to shine better when you start focusing on what is productive this is very helpful for the parents to take their uh, children to take their um, boys or the girls to the next level so this is the advice that i would give thank you ma'am now another question from professor k saravanan nowadays the media encourage youngsters to play rummy on mobile premier luggage what you have to do yes uh, they are born with the um, with the mobiles and laptops media is definitely encouraging and uh, this is again i already gave a solution for this which is lead by example and uh, this boils down to the earlier question as well when the parents are coming for to meet you give them the information that they have to lead by example mm-hmm. the change has to happen at the parents level at the professors level uh, if the student who is playing rummy or something if they see the professor playing in the college or uh, they playing outside because the world is so small they can just meet up in a coffee shop or somewhere or the personal environment the family environment their elder brother or uh, the father or the mother is very happy to play or their uh, their uh, their friends are very happy to play try to make changes on the environment rather than telling the student directly because telling them taking out of rummy from their hands is not going to help you because they are going to get really um, irritated and they are going to behave badly with you rather just put them responsible 
may try to make changes on their environment tell their parents not to give them that environment they have to change at the parents level um they just try to see what their friends are doing what is what is their circle of friends put them in a, if the current group is very acclimated where in they uh, the the group that you formed of eight student or the five student they are becoming very close to each other split the group make a change change is the only constant make a change and pull them out and put it in a different group and if you start putting them with a different kind of uh, students if they have an interaction outside they will not put their concentration on their mobiles or playing into any games if you give them a real time experience where they are really going to invest their time and they are going to really put their minds their mind will get tired there is only uh, about um, one and a half to two hours of the time in a day that a student can really spend productive if they are not spending that productive on the education they will start spending it on the uh, uh, on the games so if we start focusing exploiting their energy at this level the brain will be tired it will not look for recreation thank you ma'am the another question how to handle the adolescent kids at home very nice question adolescent kids at home uh, i handle an adolescent at home um at times i get a question why don't you do it uh, that that's the question my my son asked uh, i was never a swimmer uh, until i was 34 uh, my son asked me, I, i was telling him that uh, you have to change your strokes and this is uh, something i have given in couple of my interviews as well uh, if you google out my uh, name you will get some interviews you can just have a look at it uh, my adolescent said I told them that uh, why do you change your stroke swimming strokes this is not right this will not take you longer uh, you will slow down he immediately said why don't you try and do it it is so painful why don't you try and i said i will try it along with you i will get down i will age is just a number i will get down i will get to your stage and i will learn swimming and these days we swim together and um, we don't miss our family time wherein uh, we discuss about our homeworks in the pool when we are swimming together and when we are resting at the uh, one or two minutes in between the breaks we discuss each other when i when i want my son to swim for 3 kilometers at one shot i don't tell him anything i start swimming he loves to touch my legs while i'm swimming and he comes touching my legs every single stroke for him it is only touching the legs for me he is swimming 3 kilometers so this is the advice that i would give thank you ma'am how to handle the pressure of the parent and when it is getting into the good job so i didn't get the question right could you repeat how to handle the pressure of the parent and the relatives in getting into a good job and the answer is again in the same uh, presentation that we gave so then making a student sit and listen to a lecture right from the day one they get inside the college make them responsible give them opportunities to learn teach them uh, i am reiterating few sentences here teach them how to sell how to sell a product how to sell themselves in the global market how to think how to negotiate how to face a failure how to face a success i'm repeating how to face a success how to invest their money these days they we earn a lot of money but we don't know how to invest we just uh, invest it on their clothes we just invest it on some kfcs and mcdees um uh, we just spend uh, our money wherever uh, this is where we invest but these are not return based investments so rather we have to teach them how to invest how to follow their passion how to find their passion in the first place how to make an impact how to make a business smart child business smart student this is the last question ma'am while taking lecture distraction by the student how to control our emotion very nice and again the answer is in the my presentation itself um you don't get on the dais you don't get on the dais students should long for you to get on the dais when am i going to see my professor on the dais what are they going to teach me you have to make that longingness for example you uh, you, you most of you have your kids you keep feeding them they say no amma no appa no i don't want to eat rather you go for a long drive and come back you don't give them anything to eat for about 10 hours you come inside and just give them a rasam sadam they will just grab it and eat it that's what i wanted to do don't get on the dais until you 
feel an importance that you will get you have to get on the dais and deliver the note give them more opportunity for them to get on the dais and for them to practice and for them to deliver than sitting and reading for 10 times and replicating it on a on a on a paper they reading realizing demonstrating with their counterparts making a presentation writing it on a paper this is something gives them a lot of lot of information than sitting and reading so uh, give them a lot of exposure make them responsible for what they are doing then you get onto the stage only to sum up when you start getting onto the stage to sum up they listen keenly they will they will put all their efforts to understand whether what they have gone through currently is right and at the end of the session you give them a scoring and tell them that um this team a has scored this much for their presentation this much for their audio visual skills this much for their musical skills that they have incorporated on the slides this is where you getting along this is where you get onto the stage and this is where the students will start acknowledging you thank you for answering all our questions patiently ma'am I request Professor R. Shalini to deliver the vote of thanks. Thank you, Blessy. Good evening, one and all. I regard it as a honor and privilege to propose vote of thanks on this occasion. On behalf of Department of Management Studies, Division College, I would like to extend my profound gratitude to our management team members, President Sri Dayachand Samanshuka, Secretary Administration Dr. Harishal Mehta, Secretary Finance and Academy. Jashwant Munot for their constant support during tenure of the webinar. I express my sincere thanks to the Iron Lady Ishwari Andiyan for her excellent coverage on handling an adolescent brain. The students are the future pillar of our nation. As a teacher, our responsibility is to mold and bring out the best in them. As our speaker suggests, the transmission from standard teaching to smart way of teaching, as well as students' professor balance, that is 70 by 30 method. could be implemented in our field to render students a holistic way of learning your presentation was insightful and informative one ma'am i also wish to express my gratitude to our principal sendil raj professor in charge shaktivel murugan and head of the department dr narmada for their cooperation and guidance in organizing this event thanking all the participants for your active participation and making the event a grand success once again thanking one and all Thank you ma'am. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you so much. Thank you ma'am. I thank everyone for their valuable time spent with us. The feedback link will be shared in the chat box and WhatsApp group and the link will will be active only for 10 minutes. Thank you. Thank you ma'am. Thank you. Thank you.